the best Muslim is the one who has best character and conduct. What does character and conduct include? It includes first and foremost how to speak. How do you talk? Do you know that the Prophet ﷺ was the first and meaning the biggest example, the best and most perfect example? Nowadays, people go for speech therapy. People go to learn how to talk to others. Some parents send their children to non-Muslims in order to learn politeness and how to address others. And when people are going on marketing courses and they want to be sales ladies and sales men, they go on courses how to sell ice to those who live in Iceland. And they will sell it to them because they know how to talk. The smile you have already sells your product, believe me. You have freezing ice and people are wearing 10 jackets. But when you smile with a big load of ice in your hands, already you've sold half your product. And the next biggest word when it comes to a salesman is the word discount. May Allah protect us. For you, my dear brother, you will have 50% discount. You've sold half of your product. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us understanding. So, what discount do we get? I am trying to sell you a product. In fact, we are Muslimin, we already have the product. But my job tonight is to try and show you how deep and how fortunate we are because of the depth that Islam has gone into character and conduct. We are so fortunate. Yet, we tend to look at others and think that, you know what, those people know more, let's go and learn from them. What an insult to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every one of us is guilty of not knowing enough of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He teaches us how to speak. Let me go into a few points because we, the, the topic is going to be lengthy. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke, he spoke with the correct volume. When he spoke to one person, he did not disturb the next. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spoke according to the occasion. When it was an occasion of war, he raised his voice and became red. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا خَطَبَ إِحْمَرَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ وَعَلَى صَوْتُهُ وَاشْتَدَّ غَضَبُهُ كَأَنَّهُ مُنْذِرُ جَيْشٍ يَقُولُ صَبَّحَكُمْ وَمَسَّاكُمْ The hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, when he had a very important issue to deliver to his people, he raised his voice, his eyes went red, and he made sure he, he informed them in the most severe manner, so that they felt as though the leader of the army was telling them, this is what you should do in the morning, and this is what you should do in the evening. Command. That was sometimes. And sometimes he was so calm when a man walked into the masjid at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and urinated in one corner. I guarantee you today we see that happening in Colombo. Almost 100% of us would react in the wrong way because we don't know the sunnah. Imagine a person walking into the house of Allah and urinating. I think they would be dead. Am I right in saying that? Maybe. And I'm not saying we will beat him, but the eyes we look at him with will already destroy him. May Allah grant us understanding. But the Prophet ﷺ calmed the companions down. They wanted to beat him up. And he told them, listen very carefully, look at the conduct. He told them, La tazmuruhu. You know, don't stop him. Don't say anything to him. Imagine someone urinating and halfway down, you tell them, stop. <laughs> they will get sick. So leave him, let him finish his business. Allahu Akbar, look at the character and conduct. He was considerate of the man's health. Because that is something long term. This year is very bad, but we can now pour water over it. And he wanted to tell that man some information. And he saw the level of that man. So Rasulullah told his companions, Subbu alayhi dhanuban min al According to one narration, pour a bucket of water on this particular urination that is there. They all became busy in going to get the bucket because it was a command. Whilst they were busy, there was no one around. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called that man and says, Look, my dearest, dearest, dearest brother, I want you to know that this is the house of Allah. It is for Quran, it is for Salah, it is for recitation, it is for goodness, it is for good things, and it is not for this type of activity. It is not for this type of dirty activity. That's what he said. That man was in tears because moments ago he was about to be beaten. And now in private, his matter was resolved. Not even making a big issue, not even exposing him that, look, this is what I told him. No, privately, the issue was discussed. On what level? On the level of that man. It was easy for the Prophet ﷺ to say, do not do this again. Do you understand? And he would have no option but to say yes. That, that was a way of saying it. 
But look at the kamal and the completeness of the character and conduct of the Prophet ﷺ, even when dealing with a crisis, huge crisis. There is nothing in my mind worse than that that can happen in a masjid. And that is the house of Allah. When someone comes to our house and urinates in the lounge, I don't even think that is even thinkable in our minds. But imagine if that had to happen. Sometimes our own children or somebody's children of an age where they have no control over the sphincter muscle at the end of the urethra and they happen to urinate. We get so angry and so excited that they will never visit our house again. Sometimes people beat their own children because they made, for example, a carpet wet of urination. Ask yourself, that was, this is your house, that was the house of the Creator Himself.